Hello everyone. In a previous video, we have seen that this ML Compute Framework that you can trigger using TensorFlow only allows to run your code on the CPU and the GPU. And in this video, we will see what we can do to use the neural engine to do machine learning. However, what we will see is that the learning part is not really there when we talk about machine learning on the neural engine. So one way to access Apple's hardware with machine learning is to use this core ML framework, which you can access by using Swift. So the first thing we will try is to just use some pre-trained machine learning models, which we can actually download from, from uh, this side here and see if we can compare the neural engine and the CPU and the GPU just by feeding pictures into some of these models so that we just evaluate the function that is represented by these networks but in this step, we will not do machine learning, so we will not train these networks. So in order to do this, I just made a very quick and dirty command line app that um, allows us to run these models and to uh, feed the data into them. We can actually put a constraint that tells the that tells Core ML which compute unit to use. So here we can say. CPU only, for example. So we use ML compute units CPU only. And uh, this will only run on CPU, of course. But then the other option is CPU and GPU. So here we are not sure if it's, running, if it's running on the CPU or GPU. But we will see in the test here that there's enough of a difference to see that it actually used the GPU in these um, networks. And then finally, we can put all, we cannot say the neural engine, which is also called the ANE, so the Apple neural engine. And we cannot say to use that explicitly, but we can say to use all available compute units. And we will see that there's a big difference to this option. So it most likely uses the neural engine in uh, all of these networks. So I just picked the FCRN model, the ResNet, the MobileNet, the SqueezeNet, and uh, the Deep Lab V3 because those are super similar in how they treat the inputs. So we will go from um, a, low a lower amount of layers to the highest amount of layers. So the lowest has the squeeze net and the highest is the FCRN. Oh, and I will pause recording for each run so that the execution is not affected by the recording in the background. All right, so we're done with squeeze net. So here you can see 3.05 milliseconds versus one millisecond per image, which is a speed up by three, and then another speed up by two to the neural engine. Okay, so next we have the ResNet 50, and we can see this already has a lot more layers. I mean, of course, the architecture is also different, but, but just measured by the sheer amount of layers, we can see that here's a lot more going on. So we change this to ResNet 50 and uh, go back to the CPU. Okay, so here it took 38.6 milliseconds on the CPU, 6.7 milliseconds on the GPU and 1.6 milliseconds on the neural engine. So where here the speed up from the GPU to the neural engine was about times two, which potentially could be explained by just the number of uh, cores in each unit. So here we have eight cores and the neural engine has 16 cores, so this might be just the, the raw power difference. But for some reason, the ResNet layers are set up in a way that it's a lot more efficient to do the neural engine compared to the GPU. Okay, so next we have the MobileNet V2. So here we see there's a lot of convolutional layers. So here we have 15.6 milliseconds on the CPU, 3.05 milliseconds on the GPU, and 0.77 on the neural engine. So again, we have a bigger jump from the GPU to the neural engine compared to the uh, squeeze net in the beginning. But next, we have the Deep Lab V3, which um, uses a bunch of layers from the mobile net um, V2, but uh, has a slightly different architecture. All right, so this one took quite a bit of time. So on the CPU, we have 240.7 milliseconds, then on the GPU, 44 milliseconds, and on the neural engine, 20 milliseconds. So here again, as with the squeeze net, we have about times two speed up from the GPU to the neural engine, and a very large speed up from the CPU to the GPU. So finally, 
we have the FCRN and uh, these are the layers here. So again, quite a bit more than the deep lab V3. Okay, so the FCRN is actually surprising here. So from the CPU with 170 milliseconds to the GPU with 105 milliseconds is not that big of a jump. I mean, not the same kind of jump as earlier, but then to the neural engine, it's seven milliseconds. So the FCRN must be set up in a way that it works very well for the neural engine. So now that we did predictions, let's see if we can actually train on the neural engine. So I didn't find anything online about training on the neural engine. So I was already kind of suspicious that the, it might not be possible. And this test actually uh, proved it. So I only tried it on the mobile net though, but uh, I did it on the convolution and if it's done, and if it doesn't work on the convolution, then the chances are pretty low that it doesn't, that it works on any other layer, I would think. So I used the Chrome l 2s library for uh, Python and I loaded in the mobile net. So I have to make one of the layers updatable, which I picked the very last one, which is this one. And then you also have to add a loss and uh, optimizer and some uh, parameters for the epochs and stuff. So after doing these changes with Chrome l tools, you can actually see when you load the model in Xcode and you uh, click on the model, you can see how it now has the section updates, which for the other models where I didn't change, where I didn't enable the training, you only can see the metadata. You can do a preview run. Um, you see the predictions and you have some other tools here. But now we also have the section updates and parameters. Start the training. So here you can see I changed this to train and uh, yeah, let's see how it runs. Okay, so now it's done. You can already see there's no difference whatsoever in all three tests here. So this means that there was not no training on the neural engine, not even on the GPU apparently. Like I was looking at the graph over here and it didn't really change much. I mean, this peak maybe, but I'm not really sure what that was. But I've always seen activity down here in all four uh, performance calls. So before we stop, I quickly wanted to show that you can actually use the Python library Quorum L tools to also predict. So not just changing the model and stuff. So by using model.predict and then the image, you'll be able to test different networks with the Quorum L framework. And you can even put this option here, use CPU only, right? which is either true or false, but there is no option for the neural engine or the GPU. So let's see what happens if we put this option here and uh, if we actually use the neural engine this way as well. So here we see um, when using the mobile net V2, we get about 13 milliseconds per image and it used the GPU. So this block was when I executed this code and it uses the GPU apparently, not, not completely, but uh, it does use it. So this is 13 milliseconds, right? And here it's 12 on the CPU only. So even though we used the GPU, it was still a little bit slower than just using the CPU. So there must be some overhead here. And we probably did not use the neural engine. Otherwise, it would have been a lot faster, I assume. So according to what we did in this video from Swift, we can use the CPU, the GPU or the neural engine. And we will get diff very different performance for each of the compute units, but uh, how different they are depends on the network architecture. But sadly, it seems like we cannot really use the neural engine to train. So there's no learning on the neural engine right now.